Welcome to my lecture online. Here we have an interesting problem and it's a little bit tricky but there's actually a really good way to handle this. So the problem starts as follows. When a car is driving on a level road, the engine puts out 50 horsepower, the weight of the car is 2,000 pounds, and driving into the wind, assuming that the force onto the car by the wind is a constant, we don't know what that force is, the car will achieve a maximum velocity of 100 feet per second. And so what we're going to do here is try to find out what that force of the wind is equal to. Then let's say the same car now gets to a hill and starts climbing up the hill where the hill has a slope where we gain 5 feet for every 100 feet of horizontal gain or horizontal distance traveled. Assuming that the force of the wind is the same as before, it's still a constant, but now because we're driving up a hill, of course, the maximum velocity will be less than 100 feet per second. And they want us to calculate what that maximum velocity will be. Notice we're not taking into account any friction here. We just simply only deal with a constant wind force and climbing up a hill. Now, of course, in real life, the force caused by the wind will increase with increasing velocity, but we're not going to tackle that here. We're simply going to keep the, con the wind force constant. So how do we figure this out? Well, the best way to do this is to start with the energy conservation equation. Any work put into the system plus any initial potential energy plus any initial kinetic energy equals potential energy final plus kinetic energy final plus any energy lost. In this case, the energy lost will be by overcoming the wind resistance. Now, the way to think about it is as follows. Let's say that at t equals zero, we don't include the initial potential energy, we don't include the, the initial kinetic energy. Let's call this equal to zero. In other words, we're going to change the equation to any work put into the system will give us a gain or a change in the potential energy and a gain in the kinetic energy. And we don't have to call it a final, we simply call it, it's the difference between the initial and the final. It's the gain that we have, so we can move the initial over here, or call it zero, and it's the difference between the final and the initial kinetic energy. So it's therefore the gain in kinetic energy, plus the gain in, or potential energy, plus the gain in kinetic energy, plus any energy lost. And then if we divide both sides of the equation by time, work divided by time by definition is power. So the power put into the system, which is basically the power that we have over here, must equal, and again, change in potential energy is like work. Work divided by time is power. So it's the power required to gain potential energy, to gain potential energy, plus the power required to gain kinetic energy, plus the power required to overcome energy, so the power to overcome the resistance. Now, are we gaining any potential energy? The answer is no, because we're not climbing a hill. Are we gaining kinetic energy? The answer is no, because we're staying at a maximum velocity, so there's no potential energy gain, no kinetic energy gain, so these two are zero as well. But what that means is that the power put into the system equals the power to overcome resistance, which is the energy lost divided by the time. So the power is equal to the energy lost, and the energy lost to overcome friction would be the force times the distance. So in this case, it's the force provided by the wind times the distance, and of course, we have to divide that by the time, and distance divided by time is, of course, velocity. So this would be equal to the force of the wind, times the velocity. So essentially, if we want to find the force of the wind, we simply take the power provided divided by the velocity. So the force of the wind is equal to the power provided by the engine divided by the velocity, and the power divided by the engine is 50 horsepower. But now we have to convert that horsepower to standard units in the British system. So that means, or the imperial system, so that means horsepower is actually 550 foot-pounds per horsepower. That means that horsepower can be converted to foot-pounds, and then velocity will be in terms of 100 feet per second. Which means when we 
take the power divided by velocity, we should get force. So let's do that. 50 times 550 divided by 100, which is equal to 275 pounds of force. 275 pounds, which is the force of the wind pushing against the car. And of course, that's going to be a constant force. So next we take the car, now we start driving up the hill. Not only do we need to find the force of the wind, we also need to find, we need to gain height, which means there's power required to do that. So we're going to use the same equation, that the power provided by the engine is equal to the potential energy gained, the power required to gain potential energy, plus the power needed to gain kinetic energy, plus the power to overcome wind, the power to overcome friction or wind or resistance, overcome resistance. And just like we saw before, that the power can be written as force times velocity. So in this case, the power of the engine is equal to the power gained, the power to gain kinetic energy, to gain potential energy. Hmm. That would be the force times velocity plus the power, gain to gain, the power to gain kinetic energy would be zero because we're not gaining any speed. We should be traveling at a constant velocity. And then the power to overcome resistance, again, that would be the power of the wind times the velocity. Now, what is this force right here? This is the force required to drive up the hill. Well, let's think about it this way. We have the mg of the car. We have the perpendicular component, which is mg cosine theta, and we have the parallel component, which is the mg times the sine of theta. That means that the power required to drive up the hill, we have to fight this force times the velocity. So this force right here to cause to drive up the, up the hill, we need to, this is the force right here. mg sine theta is the force right here required to drive up the hill which means that the power provided by the engine is equal to mg sine theta times velocity plus the power of the wind, which we knew what that was, that's 275 pounds, multiplied times velocity. And ultimately what we're trying to do here is to find the velocity max. That's this velocity right here. So we say that the power of the engine is equal to velocity times mg sine theta plus 275. And then of course the velocity is going to be equal to the power divided by mg sine theta plus the 275 for the wind, which is equal to, again, 50 horsepower times 550 foot-pounds per horsepower, that's converting it to the British units, divided by mg sine theta. mg is the weight of the car, which is 2,000 pounds times the sine of that angle. Hmm, how do we find the sine of the angle? Well, first we need to find the angle using the tangent because we know the opposite side and the adjacent side. So that means that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of five over 100. So therefore theta is equal to, so five divided by 100, take the inverse tangent, that's 2.8624 degrees, 2.8624, 2.8624 degrees. And so this becomes the sine of 2.8624 degrees plus 275, which is the force of the wind. Now let's go ahead and calculate that. So we take the sine of this. 2624. Yeah. So take the sine of that angle, multiply times 2000, plus 275, divide that into the numerator, multiply times 50, and multiply times 550, which gives us a speed of 73.36 feet per second. So basically, 73.4 feet per second. That is then the maximum speed that car can drive up the hill with the same kind of wind resistance compared to driving at level at 100 feet per second. The maximum speed now is down to 73.36 feet per second. And that 
is how that's done.